Hi, Ritesh. I, 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 this is uh, rather unfortunate. I know you have a very hard stop at 7. And thanks for no, making no, time. We'll thanks for making make time. time. Yes, no, I understand. We'll so uh, in the interest of time, you know, we are talking about uh, uh, taking uh, DPIs uh, global. And there is no bigger, more well-known name today than uh, UPI. And that is a name I think everybody has heard of, everybody has used, and everyone is very familiar with, especially outside of India. So I want to ask you very quickly, um, what exactly is NPCI I doing with UPI outside of India? What countries, what's the goal, and what's the approach to making sure that it becomes global? Uh, first of all, thank you for the question, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, and. Uh, I think it's from one Shukla to the other. I hope people don't get bored of Shuklas here. But uh, coming to the question, uh, I think we have a very, very important uh, responsibility on our shoulders uh, when we talk of India outside India. I think people already know, but I'll just like to you know, refresh uh, their memory that you know, today UPI globally is processing 40% of the instant payment uh, transactions. Uh, so if there are 100 transactions happening globally, 40 are happening. India today. Uh, and this is a great scale that we've achieved. Uh, last month, we did 9.4 billion financial transactions, and uh, you know, we're growing on a month on month basis. Uh, so, given the scale that we've achieved in India, the adaptation that we have in India, it's very natural for the whole world to be curious. And I'm not going to go and talk about the damn trinity that we kind of attribute the success of uh, digital transformation in India, but there are two broad themes in our strategy when we are going outside. One is, uh, you know, enabling other countries to create sovereign payment platforms like UPIs to India. Uh, and this is very, very important because, you know, if we see globally, more and more countries are, you know, getting serious about uh, driving their national agenda. There are more countries who are moving towards democratic setup from different models uh, globally. So there is a genuine desire for them to create robust platforms that help uh, financial inclusion that help cash displacement, that help drive direct citizen welfare. Also, fintech incubation. You know, we all know how many fintechs in India have come in and created their own services or platforms on top of UPI. So we are looking at those markets where there is desire and interest to create something like UPI. And it also is kind of uh, gaining more momentum given what is happening uh, in in Europe because of the Russia Ukraine uh, you know crisis. You know where. Uh, I'm sure the audience would know that the cards issued to Russians are not working outside uh, Russia. And at the same time, people who are traveling to Russia for business interest or other reasons, you know, they are unable to transact digitally in that in that market. So there is a lot of uh, interest in the countries globally to create sovereign, sovereign platforms, platforms that are running within the countries uh, using technology that is within their control, within their, uh, the data is processed locally. And I think we are somewhere engaging with the global markets using that uh, as, as a backdrop. So that is one. The other part of our UPI global outreach is to build interoperability. Uh, you know, we know that uh, there are about 30 million Indians who live outside India and they remit close to $100 billion every year to India. Uh, and, and also if you layer that with some additional data from World Bank, globally cost of cross-border remittances is about 6%, I think this is as per a World Bank report. So with 30 million people living outside India, sending $100 billion every year to India, how can we make the current process better? How can we make it transparent? How can we make it, you know, uh, get better speed, better efficiency, even improve the cost dynamics? So that is another area that we are focusing on. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, maybe some people in the audience would know that uh, we, in the month of February, uh, the Honorable Prime Ministers of the two countries actually got together from India and Singapore and announced a, a collaboration between UPI in India and Pay Now in Singapore. It's UPI equivalent in Singapore. And now if you are in India or you are in Singapore, you can send money to each other on a real-time basis. You know, we time the transaction takes about 17, 18 seconds. In India, there are currently five banks that are part of it. In Singapore, there are two entities and we are actually broad basing it even further. So one, so first part of our interoperability is enabling real-time money movement between the two individuals in different uh, geographies. The second is merchant payments. So, uh, you know, 
uh, our economy is poised for a for a strong growth which will lead to per increase in per capita income increase in per capita income will lead to a lot of discretionary spends so we are looking at when indians travel outside india they should be able to use uh, their payment instruments from india such as upi so tomorrow imagine a situation and this is a market where we already live in ue you are there for your family holiday or your business purposes and you are able to scan the qr codes there with the partner that we are working with and you are able to make payments so that's another part so in nutshell when it comes to to answer your question simply we are doing two things when it comes to upi one is creating helping other countries create infrastructure for driving their own national agenda the other is building interoperability with india to support merchant payments when we travel outside india and to also get uh, better experiences around the inbound remittances as well as outbound remittances from india you know you i'm sorry you are not audible to me can i be unmuted please yeah you can hear me yeah you can hear me now right ritesh yes yeah yes. okay so upi and rupe are the two big let's say offerings from npci international that is being offered to countries around what has been our experience with regard to talking to other countries and institutions in those countries with regard to the challenges that exist and what are the ways in which one can consider overcoming those i think that's a great question and uh, and i would say that uh, these things are very fundamental and basic but often you know in either eagerness or excitement we tend to ignore so i think it's very very important for before we make outreach and i think there's a lot of people from fintech fraternity here i think it's very very important for us to to know one is what are we trying to solve and what are the synergies that we are kind of achieve we can achieve with what we are offering as a solution with the pain points or the requirements that other party has you know if 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 and it it takes a lot of effort to you know study the partner that we are talking to and you know deep dive into their they strive what is keeping them awake at night you know are there identified pain points what is the strategy that they are pursuing you know what are the short term long term goals because if we know these things then you can beautifully craft uh, you know the the uh, the strengths that your solution carries and uh, people you know at times i've seen an excitement you know start selling uh, a product or a solution but when you are very much focused on selling and not solutioning then you know the 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 friction or the challenge starts real challenge starts happening the what i uh, kind of highlighted as approach is time consuming uh, the the gestation period may be longer but i think it's well worth it so having a consultative approach uh, i think is is what works and uh, i keep telling the team uh, here as well that uh, you know we should aspire to be a trusted advisor Uh, so tomorrow let's say if you think of a problem i should be the first person that you're whatsapping uh, that you know this is the problem i'm facing uh, can you guys come and help me and i think with that attitude uh, i think we will win more in the long run and uh, we will be able to create long term trustworthy partnerships and i think that is what uh, we all want but of course you know the fintech community scary sometimes time pressure and all but i'm saying it's both for patient and to do our homework before we make these outreaches right so basically be patient and adopt a consultative approach for solutioning yes see you know now you know given the the massive mandate of uh, npci international and clearly the world is looking at india today primarily for the financial inclusion and related um, solutions what would you say to a small company or a startup in fintech that comes to npci and says hey look we want to be able to offer new innovative solutions on the upi guardrails be it let's say a credit card on a upi guardrail or offering credit itself as a lending mechanism in fintech right how does a young company become part of this entire offering is it possible first of all and if so what do they need to do i think that's a great question and thank you for it you know uh, for us uh, the way we are uh, you know looking at the whole piece is that uh, it's our responsibility and it's somewhere you know we feel that we have to do this uh, for the larger interest of uh, india as a country to help our uh, you know fintechs our new founders you know realize their true potential 
so that is something that's uh, you know everybody in the organization feels and it's somewhere in our dna if i can make that statement uh, when it comes to how to follow through i think we have a dedicated fintech team in place and uh, there are uh, people a very very bright uh, set of energetic people who are you know uh, looking at this uh, piece uh, so any fintech you know uh, uh, who's keen on 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 designing solutions on top of npci products or is keen to collaborate with us for international markets is more than welcome and uh, it is a good india story because when right now we are talking about platform but if we can also bring in some fintechs along with it uh, you know that will be again very beautiful uh, for for us as an organization and also for the country and also we we are doing this uh, today you know there are i won't name those fintechs but there are fintechs that we are working there are young entrepreneurs we are working who we feel have uh, you know have created their mark here and who we feel that can also make an impact at the global stage we are somewhere in the process and we are you know trying to collaborate as much as we can uh, so so that journey is already you know has started if i can say uh, how much more time do you have uh, uh, you're not audible to me. can you yeah uh, can you hear me now yes yeah how much more time do you have because i know you have a hard no, stop and we can go on for some more time okay good good yeah, yeah, yeah. because one of the one of the issues about working outside of india is you know kind of uh, uh, calibrating the opportunity particularly for the younger companies and when they come alongside you and they realize it's a long gestation period project uh, and that becomes a bit of a challenge for the younger smaller companies and therefore they need an ecosystem of support they need others to participate alongside them perhaps a larger system integrator of some kind because there's a lot of work to be done at the client organization end in the target uh, country um how does that ecosystem work and how does a younger company connect into the npci network so to speak so i think uh, i and i'm international so i'll talk more about the international part of it but uh, uh, to your question on the domestic part i think as i said earlier there's already a team in place and anybody who has a bright and fancy idea can definitely you know reach out to them and uh, you know and and you know start engaging to drive fruition but when it comes to international i think uh, there's very something very important that we have to be mindful is that we are also it somewhere rubs off on the image of the country and uh, so so we have to be very very uh, you know clear one is what we want to achieve and the other is you know uh, as far as we feel that we shouldn't be doing things that we are not ready you know because ultimately it rubs on the image of the country larger ecosystem and it creates some kind of a doubt so and 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 rightly so a lot of fintechs today are first focusing on india consolidating indian market and then they are going overseas and there are many examples and uh, you know especially in payment space we have seen uh, uh, some of the indian companies they go and they have acquired companies in southeast asia they have created small footprint in one country and when they have you know successfully demonstrated their ability to work in international market now they are gaining you know foothold across uh, so that's one then there are also companies who are like uh, uh, digitally uh, you know supporting payments wherein uh, uh, you know uh, we are 1.4 billion and growing and the income is also increasing so a lot of people are consuming services online so how do you work with international merchants aggregators to uh, you know be able to enable that merchant who's sitting in us or you know europe wherever uh, be able to target indian audience so there are there are these exciting you know use cases but one thing i would say is uh, please don't uh, do things uh, for the for the for just for the name part of it because uh, you know in 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 this world i think trust is very important if you lose once you're not only damaging yourself but you're also damaging brand india and uh, it's very very important in today's times for us to you know ensure that our country you know start stand tall um, you know we already you know i was i was sitting i was with a foreign dignitary today i was telling him that we export more software than the oil saudi arabia exports so we are already in a very very strong space how do we take it further is something that you know we should do and uh, you know uh, so so very very important to ensure that the brand india the trust that we inspire stays intact Uh, in this area and we should take small steps you know uh, uh, and and make very very solid uh, beginning so can i yeah so that's a point well made right it takes a lifetime to build a reputation and a moment to lose it um so you know my 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 last question 
today, you know, the world's largest uh, deployment of uh, digital public good is the MOSIP uh, identity platform, right? And uh, I can see Professor Sadagopan sitting here, and <laughs> who's the grandfather, I would say, of this whole project. Uh, so so the, the, the point I'm trying to make is, are there thoughts within NPCI International to work with, you know, uh, largely deployed DPGs, like a MOSIP, such that mo it, so that you ride on top of a DPG, you provide the payment rails, so that it now becomes a end offering to a country, almost like a stack that you're building on top, right? So is that kind of yeah. thinking there? So I'll, yeah, so I'll tell you the way we are approaching about um, the first pillar of our strategy that I spoke about earlier, which is infrastructure built. In that, uh, you know, we are, our, our model of uh, partnership is either government to government or a central bank to central bank. Because we believe a platform like UPI needs support from both. You know, what UPI today is because of the progressive thinking of Reserve Bank of India and the support that government provides. And without that support, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to make a guess, but UPI wouldn't have been what UPI today is. So we feel that for us to make successful, uh, you know, deployments overseas, we need, uh, you know, strong sponsorship from government and also a regulator of the country to play an important role. So we are making outreaches to these uh, uh, entities and uh, we are uh, making the whole uh, you know services available to them in somewhat you know very very fluid and flexible manner uh, because we feel that uh, they are the right people you know there is no point you know offering upi to a common person or a commercial in interest entity because uh, we don't know what they will do with it so we are engaging with these entities and uh, of course uh, uh, i think mosip uh, as a uh, is being used by, if I remember my last uh, number, I remember was eight countries. So we, those countries are, are, sorry, you wanted to say something? 10, it's 10 now. So, okay. So that's really good to hear. So we are, you know, very, very interested in engaging with those and we are engaging with those already who are, you know, interested in, uh, you know, layering it as a, as a, as a payment layer on top of the, the digital ID layer. So we are in the process and uh, I think we have good, uh, uh, you know, uh, good traction and uh, a good runway to, you know, cover. So, you know, I think in the interest of time, first, I must deeply thank you, Ritesh, for making time. And I know we've kept sort of delaying the session with you. Thanks a lot for making time. I think uh, these 30 odd minutes, I think that we've spent has been fantastic. Thanks for this is a very brief primer on uh, uh, NPCI International. I'm sure there'll be an opportunity for a lot more. So thank you once again for your time and thank you to the audience for listening to us patiently. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>